Hello everyone, my name is Napoleon Kaufman. I'm the senior pastor here at the Well Christian Community. And I want to thank you for tuning in for Times of Refreshing. Can I have an amen, y'all? And so we want to be, we want to, we want to see God move, and, but we want to see also an environment. Now watch this, and this is the point I want to get to, an environment where, like he says here, when you see the order, it also brings encouragement or exhortation. Like, wow. And this is what he says. I love it. He says, for you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and be what? Encouraged. The exhortation comes forth because there's, there's order and people, but yet people see the spirit of God moving. This should bring exhortation to the house. It should encourage people that, man, God used him? God is using her? Man, well, I was just talking to them the other day. They didn't tell me that, that they had this gift. No, they, we don't have to pass out business cards. There's, hey, listen, you don't know this. There's some powerful people sitting next to you. They, didn't, they don't have to, you know, the heavens don't have to crack open for them to come into the room. But God, they're powerful. God's got a powerful gift in their life. But it doesn't mean that they have to walk around with their clergy collar now. It doesn't mean that everybody got to kiss the ring. It doesn't mean that you, you, you're not going to be able to preach good unless you got a, you know, a clergy robe on. doesn't mean that now I have to have this certain aura and image. Can I have an amen, y'all? Doesn't mean that now, you know, nobody can call you by your first name ever again. Chief prophetess, that's all you call me. Now, we want to be respectful and give honor to where our honor is due. We're not, we're not, but, but listen, we don't want to go on the other extreme well, your mama can't even call you baby no more because you prophesy one time. <laughs> but when you see the order and you see true prophetic ministry operating and it's not out of control, it's, it's, it's classy and professional, it's what God is looking for, what happens is it should bring encouragement. It should bring exhortation. There's order here and there's power here. The last thing, this is important for all of us, especially as leaders here in the church. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, on down to 12. The Apostle Paul in 1st Thess First Thessalonians chapter 2, he's addressing his conduct as a leader. And not only his, also those that were part of his team. And in verse 10, let's look at verse 9. At verse 9, we pick this up. He says, for you remember, brethren, our labor and toil for laboring night and day that we meet. We might not be burdened to any of you. We preach to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believe, as you know how we exhorted and comforted 
and charged every one of you as a father does his own children, that you would walk worthy of God who calls us into his own kingdom, he says in glory. We know that the apostle Paul was a prophet. Not only was he prophetic, but he was also an apostle. And God used him mightily to write the epistles, to travel, to preach, to suffer for the cause of Christ. Many things came across his, uh, came, uh, you know, uh, I'll say it like this. Many things were, were tough in his ministry. He did not have a cakewalk. We see this when we pick up the book of Acts and we read these epistles. It was a labor of love. It was a hardship in some ways, the way in which his story unfolded on the pages of this Bible. Now, obviously, he had many great victories and triumphs, and, and God used him mightily. But being in ministry is not for the faint of heart. Being a Christian in this world is not for the faint of heart. When you make a decision to give your life to Jesus Christ and walk with God, that it's not going to always be easy. There's gonna, you're, you've got to fight on your The devil wants to take you out. And he will use any means necessary. So we see. But the Apostle Paul was an exhorter through his ministry, through his preaching, his teachings, through the prophetic. Through helping people to align themselves with God. He talks about walking worthy of God. He was able to exhort people in a direction. And, but he, he talks about his conduct and his character. And this is the most important aspect of it he says in verse 9 for you remember brethren our labor and toil this is a this was a character char this was a characteristic of his ministry that helped in bringing exhortation and helped to solidify who he was before the people he was a hard worker it's a shame to me when i talk to people sometimes people think that getting in ministry it's like an easy job. If, if you, oh my goodness. Saints, don't do, you don't get involved in this stuff unless you have been called by God. This stuff will kill you. The stuff that you've got to deal with and the stuff that you expose yourself to in terms of demonic attack and backlash and hatred and resentment in the spirit the devil will try to get you to go crazy you've got to have God's endorsement on your life and know you have been called and chosen this is not a game there is no job that I know in the world that is tougher than this right here. I don't care. You can say president. You can say this. You can say that. You can say military. I don't care. This, this, what we do here is keeping people from going to hell for the rest of their life. Can I have any? I need to preach on this. This is not a joke. This is not. And the devil, and the devil is a chief strategist on how to take us out. It's one thing, it's one thing to understand. We have to realize this is serious business. Ministry is serious business. It's not a, well, this is a quick way for me to make some money. The devil is a lie. <laughs> Don't you get it twisted. <laughs> Whew. Can I have an amen, y'all? And so he says that they labored. He says, and toiled. He says, look here in verse 9, for laboring night and day. For laboring night and day, that means that he was always available and he was, uh, he was working all night. There's calls that I've received in the middle of the night that it just, it's, it's sad. And you're always on call. You're always on call. And, and it's, now watch this. It doesn't mean that you handle every situation. But it does mean that emotionally and mentally, you're concerned about every situation. 
So you're trying to sleep, but you can't sleep because you're worried about this person's problem and that what they got going on and this person's suffering. And then you're dealing with your own stuff. Can I have an amen, y'all? And people have to understand that, that he said laboring night and day, this was a part of it. And seeing leadership, seeing people around you, saints of God around you, this should bring exhortation and prophetic exhortation, knowing that you're running with people that are running in the right direction and are doing it the right way. He says here, Laboring night and day that we may not be a burden to any of you. He says we preach to you the gospel of God. I love this because not only that, he was willing if need be. And he was willing to say, I don't want nothing from anybody. So nobody can say I've done anything. And I want to say this, and I've said this in the church, and everybody knows this in the church. When we planted this church, there has and, and, the, and the people on our trustee board will tell you. Now, I thank God for blessing me as a pastor with a salary from this church. It is a blessing. I thank God for it. But nobody can ever say I ever asked for a salary from this church. I never did. And I never have. They came to me and said, Pastor, this is what we, we, this is what we should do. This is what God, this is what we do. But they'll never be able to say, I came in and said, okay, I'll do it, but tell me the price. Can I have an amen, y'all? That's my testimony. I can say that because that's the history of this church. They came to me and said, hey, we want to give you a salary, da, 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 da. I said, okay. Now, I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't fight them over it. But the testimony stands the same amen and now watch this y'all and i'm saying this i'm preaching to my leaders right now and i've never gone to a preaching engagement maria will tell you and said i will come and speak at your church if you give me x and x amount of dollars have i ever maria they do all that through her They'll call her and they'll ask her, da 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 da, and, and she'll tell them exactly what she's told them for 12 years or whatever. Whatever you get, choose to give them, he'll, he'll take it. Just, you know, praise God. Can I have an amen? Now, I'm saying this because there has, when God is looking at, it, when God is trying to exhort us in a direction, when God is trying to get us going, leadership is a big part of making sure we're going in the right direction. But if leadership is defiled, or if somebody in this place is defiled in terms of men, their mentality concerning the picture of ministry, then what happens is, now watch the saints, what happens is God can't take you to where he's trying to take you. Because now you become a hireling. So you may be going somewhere, but it's not somewhere that God is exhorting you prophetically to go. The Apostle Paul wasn't like this. And he gives us a great picture. And then he says this in verse 10. You are witnesses, and God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believe. He said devoutly. He was devoted. He says justly. He says blamelessly. We behaved ourselves among you who believe. So when it comes to leaders, listen to me, saints. When it comes to leaders, how you behave does matter. Can I preach this this morning? How you behave does matter. If you're leading your family, how you behave does matter. Well, brother, don't tell me anything. I've been around the church a, last, a long time. Well, how have you been living? Because how you behave, it does matter. The Apostle Paul said this is how we behaved. He says devoutly, justly. He said blamelessly among you be, who believe. He said not only in your sight, but in the sight of God. He says, as you know how we exhorted. And comfort it and charge every one of you as a father does his own children that you would walk worthy of God 
who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And I want to stop by this, stop with this. And I love this because this is so important. If we're not from this pulpit and as leaders in the church not exhorting you to walk worthy of God, we are doing you a disservice in the sight of God. Because that is the heart of it all. Are you living right before God? And we're exhorting you to maintain your, your relationship with God. Comforting you to maintain your relationship with God. This is what God is looking for. Fathers in the house that will say, this is how you live to honor God and exhort people to do this. This is what we should be doing. Not just talking to people about how much money they're giving the church. Not just asking people how many events they've gone to. Not just asking people to serve in the church. Not just asking people, you know, uh, about this, that, and the other. But are you walking with God? Are you walking with God? Are you making sure that my walk with God, it doesn't matter about all this stuff if we're not walking with God. Can I have an amen, y'all? What good is it for us to go to church if we don't even walk with God during the week? Ooh, I feel this right now. I feel this right now. What good is it for us to punch our ticket if we're not walking with God? We're wasting our time. But we can't have leaders that stand up and say, it's okay. You don't have to walk with God as long as you come to church and give your tithes. Long as you come, long as you show up in the building and it looks like we have a lot of people here, then praise God for the photo op. But this is what the church, a lot of churches have come to. And this is what we have to fight, y'all. And so exhortation is also about looking at those that you have in leadership positions in the church and through their life. In their example, they help to exhort you on to fulfill your purpose and destiny and prophetic purpose for your life. As you look and say, man, that person can do it. If he did it, I can do it. If she did it, I can do it. You mean you came to the church and you were addicted to drugs and God is using your life yet now? Yep. And if God can do it for me, he could do it for you. Just stay on, stay with Jesus. Can I have an amen? You mean to tell me, Minister Antonio, that when you first got to this church, you were just a little, a little boy and, and you were playing the drums and then all of a sudden you taught yourself how to play the keyboard and then now all of a sudden you, you the worship leader here at the church? And I can go through testimony after testimony after testimony. Some of you guys see Minister Tammy up here singing, but you didn't see her when she first came to the church. And how God changed her life. She didn't look that way when she first came to the church. Didn't sing that way. But you see, and you watch people go through a process and they are exhorted into purpose. And then you see God do something dynamic in their life. Can I have an amen, y'all? Then you sit back and you say, well, man, that exhorts me. Because if God could do that in their life, then God can do it in my life. If God can do it in Apostle Paul's life, now listen, saints, and I'm going to close with this. One day I'm going to close, but I'm going to close. Yeah, but if I'm looking at Apostle Paul and I'm seeing this, I'm saying, if he can do this as a leader, why can't I do that as a leader? Saints, my encouragement to you is this. Allow us as a church to exhort you into your purpose and destiny. Your prophetic purpose and destiny. And stop thinking that it's some, some, something's going to fall out of the sky. It's going to be a grind. It's going to be some cleaning up. It's going to be some mopping up. And then there's going to be some building. There's going to be some erecting. There's going to be some structure. There's going to be some government. And you're going to look back on your life and say, man, at that church, God changed my life and helped to lay a foundation for greatness. And look what God is doing in my marriage. Look what he's doing with me raising kids. And look what he's doing in my business. Look what he's doing in my health. Look at what he's doing in my mind. Look what he's doing. I'm not crazy anymore. 
I, something has, they've exhorted me, and then now I don't have to go outside my church to find an example. I'm going to sit down with this brother right here because I see him with his wife and his kids, and I see he's faithful, and he's consistent, and he's holy. He lives right. He's doing, I'm going to spend some time with that person right here, and I don't got to go and see this person and that person and that person. I'm going to pick this person up. I'm going to go spend time with her because she can show me exactly how to do it, just like I like what they got going on in their marriage. I like, can I have an amen? <laughs> You shouldn't have to go far. The Apostle Paul became an example. And his example, as we're reading here today, is still having an impact on people like us. Can I have an amen, y'all? Lord, we thank you this morning that you desire to prophetically exhort us in the right direction. You speak to us individually. Prophetically, you speak to us as a group. Prophetically, the order that you've established in the church through the prophetic brings exhortation. And we thank you, Lord, that you've raised up leaders that through their examples and their lifestyles and the way in which they conduct themselves, it brings exhortation and comfort to all of us. Even as they charge us, as a father does his own children, that we would walk worthy of you, God, because you called us into your own kingdom and glory. You've done all these things. And I just pray, Lord, for not only us as leaders here at the church, but also as leaders in our families, that our kids would see these examples. And it would exhort them that if my mom and dad can live like this, then I can do it by the grace of God. If my mom can raise me all by herself and be faithful and consistent and be an example, Lord, that if she can do it, then I can do it. That if my father had to raise me all by himself, and but he was an example and a holy man, a praying man, that if he can do it, I can do it. Lord, help us to be a church where there's so many examples of people that are doing it right, that it becomes contagious, that it becomes, it begins to spread like wildfire, that people begin to have meetings with people that are doing right because they want to do right. And Lord, help us to be such a church community that people outside of our church would come knocking on our doors to say, what are you all doing over there? We know you guys prophesy. We know you guys excel in casting out demons. We know that you all have a great worship team. You, But man, I was spending some time with one of the members of your church. And they're such a great example. We want that over here. Help us, Lord, to be examples. Help us to exhort people into their purpose. And we commit ourselves to giving you all the glory for it. Because you're worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody said amen, amen, amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. And I want to say this, and obviously no one in this church is perfect, including myself. We're all God's worksmanship. God is working on us. God is processing us. He's doing great things in our life. But I can remember when I, I first got saved. And uh, I, thought it, I thought that it, it wasn't possible to live right and to do right and different things. And, and, but I saw examples of individuals that were doing. And I can remember stand, saying before the Lord one time, Lord, in the church and people are just hypocrites they're not living right they're not doing right 
And I was frustrated. I was going through a period of time and frustrated, frustration. And, and I was frustrated and I was going through this process. And I said, I started praying and I said, Lord, I was saying all this thing. And he just stopped me and said, well, why don't you live right? Why don't you live right? You live right. You do it. If you're concerned about everybody being an example, why don't you be an example? Be an example. Be, you be an example. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. It's like, you know what? But, but I loved it because it was the, the challenge is, is that you be the one. Don't worry about what everybody else, and don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Purpose in your heart that, man, I'm going to live for God. I don't care what happens. I'm going to live for Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. I'm going to live for Jesus Christ. I'm not going to get caught up in the world. I'm going to live for Jesus Christ. You be the one and be unashamed about it. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. Deacon Rob was there. He knows. He saw the whole thing. He, he saw me get saved and never looked back. Did I ever look back? I never looked back. He saw, he witnessed the whole thing. Then I had the privilege of baptizing him. And Pam. I mean, it's, but, but you make up your mind that you know what, I'm going to be an example. I may not be popular. I may not be liked. But I'm going to be an example for Christ. And Every single person in this room, that's how you should be thinking. I walk with Jesus. You walk with Jesus? Yep, I walk with Jesus. And never apologize for it. Can I have an amen, y'all? Can I have an amen? Thank you for joining us for Times of Refreshing. This program is a production of the Well Christian Community. You can learn more about our church and the various ministries we offer by visiting us on the web at www.thewellchurch.net or by calling our office at 925-479-1414. Or if you're looking for a church home or visiting the Livermore area, we would love for you to come by and visit us. Our service times are Sunday, 10.30 a.m. We are located at 2333 Nissan Drive in Livermore, California, 94551. For direction to our church, Call us at 925-479-1414. Until next time, may Jesus Christ be highly exalted in your life and may his word bring you a peace that transcends all understanding.